All right. What is the what is the relationship between orthodoxy and and evangelism? Uh, how do orthodox evangelize? Should orthodox evangelize? What what is our our role as as orthodox Christians when it comes to uh, evangelizing? First, let me say sharing the good news is part of what it means to be an orthodox Christian. It always it always wounds my heart a little bit when I when I hear the the, the, the the popular phrase that orthodoxy is the best kept secret in America. I think, oh, oh my goodness, um, it is something wonderful. But if it is something wonderful, why is it a secret? Why aren't we why aren't we sharing it? Why aren't we shouting it from from the rooftops? We 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 need to be, you know, evangelism is and sharing the good news. And, and, and being mission-minded. It, it, it's in that context where, we, where I think we really um, put our, our, our money where our mouth is, or, or we put our, 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 our faith where, where our heart is, or our heart where our faith is. And what I mean by that is, uh, to go out and evangelize and to share the good news means you have to first sit down and say to yourself, do I actually believe this? Do I actually believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and that it's effectual for my salvation and my union with God? And, and, and that's, that's a scary thing. That's a challenging thing to ask yourself and say, do I really believe this? And if so, is it worth going out and sharing it with others? And hopefully the, hopefully the answer for all of us is yes. Now, how we go out and do that might, might uh, vary from person to person or for, uh, from church to church, but it's something that we are called to do. The, the second popular phrase or, or quote that I, that I hear is, is the famous one from Saint Seraphim of Sarov, uh, which essentially is, is something like, um, work on yourself. Save yourself, and, and a thousand around you will be saved. And unfortunately, that, that quote is taken, I think, out of context from the life of Saint Seraphim, and is certainly taken out of context from the very life of the church. Um, the, the idea that all of us um, just, just sit at home uh, and say our prayers, come to church, um, receive the sacraments, and, and we don't have to then do anything after that. And then all of a sudden, uh, like, like moths to the flame, uh, people are going to come to the church. First of all, if we adopt that attitude, we have to look in the mirror and say, wow, we're really not that pious, are we? Because the people aren't coming. So, so if, if that is the attitude, then we have some serious repenting that we need to do. And maybe we do. But if you look at the life of Saint Seraphim, if you look at the lives of other saints, they had this idea of prayer and repentance and working on yourself and your own salvation, but they also had this idea of hard work and going out and reaching the people. Take a look at Saint John Maximovich, for example, and the work that he did to bring people into the church. Take a look at the, the work and the life of St. Raphael of Brooklyn. Take a look at the life of St. Herman. Take a look at the, the lives of St. Cyril and Methodius. Take a look at the lives of the apostles. If ever there was a holy person, the lives of the apostles, the apostles themselves, and the work that they did to preach the good news to, to the entire world and ultimately to, to bring about the conversion of an empire. And that's, that's amazing. That's work. So, so you, you have this life of, of prayer and this, this life of labor. And, and the two of them working together. So we have to evangelize. Part of what being an Orthodox Christian means is that we share the good news. We work on ourselves. We work on our own salvation. But part of working on our own salvation means that we go out and we reach others. And we say, hey, Come and see. Practically speaking now, how can we evangelize? 
A very simple way is live a pious life and invite people to church. There's a, there's a popular statistic, I don't know how true it is, that 80% of people say that they would have come to church had they been invited. I don't know how true that is, but I think it's true enough to say that people are more likely to come if you invite them, particularly those uh, that you have a relationship with already. You know, faith is, is so foundational to our lives. And and as such, it's, it's something that's intimate. So, so the people that we need to, to reach out to first and foremost need to be those that, that, that we're on intimate terms with, our friends, our family, and then from there, our, our, our co-workers, from our community members, from the people uh, who are a part of different organizations, the, 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 the soccer mom, that, that, that we meet at our child's game. Develop a relationship with them. And then as that relationship develops, the opportunity will open up where you can say, hey, you know, you, you said something or, or I was talking with you and, and it just made me think. You might want to come and check this out. Come, come to service. Come to service and check this out. I think one of the challenges to evangelizing is, is that we, we lack these intimate relationships or, or that we have, a, we have a problem forming relationships. So if we want to evangelize, I think the first thing that we, we need to consider is how do I have a relationship with somebody to the point where I, I, I'm comfortable where I can invite them to church. I don't think it takes much, to be honest. This isn't complicated. You don't have to take years to develop a relationship with somebody before you can invite them. But I think it is something that that is a that is a challenge that we need to that we need to face. Another another challenge is 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 fear, the fear of being rejected. I'll be honest. I've invited people to church, and they don't come. They say they will, and they don't show up. Or I invite them to church, and they say, "Oh, that's nice, but no, thank you." That's going to happen. I don't I don't take it personally. It's it's not about me. It's, a, it's about God. It's about them and God. And, and my faith is not, uh, at the end of the day, dependent on whether or not they come to church. I want them to come to church. But, but my, my faith, your faith, can't be dependent on uh, whether or not somebody uh, rejects us or accepts us. So we need, we need to work on, on, on the fear of, 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 being, of being rejected. A another challenge, and this is something that I hear a lot, is... Uh, well, uh, Father, talking about the, the, the faith in the workplace is something that's, that's either prohibited or, or discouraged. I will grant you that there are instances where talking about faith in the workplace might be prohibited or might be discouraged. But I'm willing to bet that those instances are fewer than we realize. Just talking with a coworker on your lunch break or just in, in, in a casual moment and saying, hey, you want to come to church with me? I, I don't think that's going to uh, get you ostracized or, or, or cause you to lose your job. Now, if you're obnoxious about it, if you keep pursuing it after someone has said no thank you um, and, and you're harassing, well, then that might be a problem, but that would be a problem with anything. You know, but just to say... Um, uh, Casually, but in, with all sincerity, hey, you know, we were, we were talking in the cubicle the other day, and, and I thought uh, you might like to come to church. I, I, I think in most, instance, most instances, that would be okay. I was talking to another priest recently, and, and he shared another idea with me that, that I think might be the case, and that is we're interested in orthodoxy. We're interested in the faith. But, but we think that our neighbors aren't. We think, oh, why would they be interested? Why, why would they want to come? They're, they're in their own world. They're doing their own thing. Or they go to their own church. Why would they be interested in, in, in all of this? 
and we sell ourselves short. I mean, hey, you're interested, so, so why, wouldn't your, why wouldn't your neighbor be interested? You know, well, don't, don't, don't sell them short, don't sell ourselves short. We've got something here. Obviously, it, it's attracted us, so why, why wouldn't it attract them? It's been attracting people throughout the ages. So, so why wouldn't it attract people uh, in, this, in this day and age? It, it will. But we, we have to um, uh, have, the, have the courage and have the confidence to know that we have something here that's worth offering, worth offering the world. So anyway, that's my, that's my, little, uh, uh, my little quip on, on evangelizing and, and, and why we need to do it and what some of the challenges are that we need to, we need to overcome. But, but orthodoxy can't be a secret. It can't be something that's only for us. It's, it needs to be and is something for, for the whole world.